Good Monday morning. I hope you're doing well today. Surprise, it's Pastor JT again, not Pastor Jack. Um, well, I just want to say good morning and uh, let's start off with some prayer first. Gracious God, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for the sunshine that we got to wake up to. Thank you for just letting us wake up. I mean, sometimes it's just as simple as that. Um, but God, we give you thanks and we give you praise as we dive into your word this morning, uh, this uh, Monday morning Devo, that we get to spend time with you and with each other um, in these moments, studying your word, your scripture. May we take it and, and really just let it move and apply to our lives. And uh, God be with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today we're going to be reading from <clears throat> someplace that I, I don't think Pastor Jack or I <clears throat> really read that much from. Um, today's scripture comes from uh, 1 Peter uh, 4, chapter 4. <clears throat> uh, give me one second, let me pull this up. Um, and uh, this is uh, chapter 4, and hear these words. It says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though something strange were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that at the revelation of His glory you may also rejoice and be overjoyed. If you are insulted for the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief or evildoer or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed. But it is to the glory of God in this name. It is to glorify God in this name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first... What will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is with difficulty that the righteous is saved, what will become of the godless man and the sinner? Therefore, those also who suffer according to the will of God are to entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. Now, before we dig into this piece of scripture, one second. My cat keeps opening the door, which is a funny thing. Um, this morning, I woke up, uh, I don't know, around 5 o'clock. Uh, went to take little Amos back there out to the potty. I don't think he knows that word yet. Uh, he knows some of the other words, though. Anyways, so um, I woke up and lo to find um, my glasses were on the floor somehow. And I don't know if you can see very well in the camera because uh, my little thing went off so I can't see you know, what you're seeing. But uh, he decided to nibble upon my very expensive glasses. They don't look that expensive. They're just these clear things. But the frames themselves aren't really what was expensive. It was the lenses. I went out of my way this time to get photochromatic because I really wanted sunglasses that I could see. And uh, I had not had those in a while, so I kind of went all out and, and got these fancy things. So anyhow, my fancy glasses were on the floor, chewed. And the dog, of course, is not actively chewing on them. He's sleeping like a baby that he is. So I take him out, and uh, life goes on. Then this morning, as I was making my breakfast, uh, I chose we have some paper bowls you know trying to uh to conserve energy and water and uh, granted you know paper goes in landfill but anyways uh the idea is that i chose a paper bowl so i didn't have to wash a dish and i made proceeded to make my oatmeal and i put it in the microwave and while the dogs were out and <sighs> then unbeknownst to me <clears throat> when it dinged and I proceeded to get my butter and put it in my oatmeal. As I opened the door of the microwave, the oatmeal had exploded all over the microwave. 
And so, I sat on my couch with what little bit of oatmeal that was left in the bowl. And I thought about this in this verse that we were reading. And I thought to myself, woe to me, right? What a pitiful morning. Let me give you some more perspective. Yesterday, after church, I sat upon the couch and watched a little bit of TV. And then, uh, with some egging on of my beautiful and well-intended wife, uh, to go and fix my water pump, she pushed me off the couch. The water pump on my blazer is out, and um, that's, you know, bad enough as it is. And I proceeded to take it off, which isn't so hard to do on an older vehicle like I have. But when I went to take the fan blade, which shouldn't be that hard of a job, off, somehow I have misplaced my uh, adjustable wrench. And I have plenty of adjustable wrenches uh, and regular wrenches. However, this is a abnormally large one, and I have a tool just for that. And now it is missing, and now my water pump sits off the truck. However, the fan blade is still attached to the water pump, and therefore the whole assembly cannot be removed, even though I've taken out the radiator and things like that to try to fit it, but it won't fit. So these are all frustrations. The frustrations of my water pump, the frustrations of my glasses, the frustrations of my puppy dog that have been keeping me up at night, even though I love him dearly. But I don't count any of those things as being oppressed by the evil one for God. So what, is, what does Peter mean here? What is, what is he actually saying, you know, in these times? Well, for them, by the time that Peter is writing this, uh, Christians are being persecuted. Uh, they're, they're not even called Christians at this point. They're, they're just a, a, a sect of, of Jews and, and a few Gentiles that have been brought into the fold that are professing Jesus Christ as basically Lord and and of course, the emperor of Rome can't have that, and and the people that are in power can't have that, and so the you know it builds up to this point where eventually, not necessarily in Peter's time, but you know Christians are thrown into an arena and they are uh, basically sacrificed to lions and different beasts, uh, you know bears and all sorts of animals of fighting for sport um, or what they would consider sport back then. That that's persecution. Uh, people telling me that they don't like me on Facebook because maybe I don't agree with them. That's that is not that's not persecution. Persecution is you know not being able to uh, buy a home maybe you know uh, because of the color of my skin um, or 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 other things like that. That's that's persecution that's that's wrong that, that's actually wrong in in some other directions B but on that level that's persecution but in the midst of all this you know in in both aspects it still brings us to the same place granted maybe there's there's feelings th those feelings are harder to get to when you are you know, knee deep in the mess of it all. But in that place, it says this, keep on rejoicing so that at the revelation of his glory, you may also rejoice and be overjoyed. And it makes mention here, which I think applies today. It says, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you're blessed because the spirit of of glory and of God rest upon you. What a place to be. What amount of focus is that taking us really to stop and realize that? To say, I'm in this place of glory and that the Spirit of God rests upon me. Now, I know some of you are probably going through things. Maybe it's not persecution. Maybe it's not even little aggravations like what I'm dealing with. But I think it's good to remember that we are in this place. We are in this now. 
and that God has given us this great comforter. And I think in that there is joy. Even in rough times. Times of sickness, uh, times of loneliness. And that brings joy. We we say that on Saturday night. I don't think, uh, I'm not sure. I've not heard it said on Sunday at Hope. But it, we do have this thing on Saturday where we, <clears throat> at the end of service as part of the benediction, we say go out and we give the world joy. So how do we do that? How do we how do we take that joy out? <clears throat> huh. Well, here you go. Through this, through your example, through your hands and feet and just living. This morning as I was eating my oatmeal, I was playing music on my little Apple TV and one of the songs that came up was this song, Another in the Fire. And it's just this wonderful song uh, that I think really kind of fits this moment. And give me one second. And I will pull up the words for you. It says... There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free. There's a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There is another in the fire. So, in this verse, in this particular verse, the fire, of course, being Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm not sure if that's how you actually say their names. I think it's pretty close. And then, of course, the waters being Moses. But over and over, it shows this. That God is with us. Always. Amen. Amen. And amen.